and you are back with the crew. I have uh, some exciting fun news today. I just got off the phone with a friend of mine who set me up. To... I've been dealing with this guy for about a month now. He's new to me. He's a Goldman Sachs. He's not on the trading floor, but he is connected to trading and the banking side of, tra of trading. And he was telling me that, hey, I'm going to have this, uh, my boss, if you will, who's more into banking, call you up because all those questions that you hit me with, I can't answer and maybe he can answer for you and maybe he will because he's been talking uh, for a while now the way you've been talking and uh, I, I think that you're onto something. Uh, give you a little background on who this guy is. He's a Goldman Sachs trader. He called me uh, probably two months ago. Um, he emailed me like three times and I finally looked at the email and I was like, yeah, okay, this is like, looks legit, you know. Uh, by the way, you can reach out to us uh, through uh, the Staple Crew and uh, dot com and you can get a hold of us and we also have a website that you can uh, get or you can leave your information and contact us. Uh, the reason why... I love getting information from people. Okay, the reason why I get so much information from people, let's start there. I've talked about this in the past, but this is so important because so many people ask me the same question. Well, what's his name? Where does he work? And what's his rank? And what's his serial number? And I want to know his blood. It's like, you don't need to know all of that. You just, I mean, trust me. The more information I tell you about who these people are, the less likely they are to call me back. That's one thing that most people don't understand is the big reason why people don't tell you anything is because you probably have a big mouth, okay? And I'm just saying that because I had a big mouth for a very long time. And it wasn't until I could figure out, hey, you know what? This is really important. I'm dealing with a lot of very wealthy people who have a lot of big private secrets and private lives in the yachting industry. And if I go around telling everybody who they are and what they're up to, it's probably going to get back to them and then I'll be fired and I'll lose my job. And that's happened numerous times. And many, most crews get fired for two reasons. Talking to the media, <laughs> number one, will get you gone that week and number two is doing inappropriate things in front of people that expose them to the, the inappropriate stuff in other words make them look bad because you know i like all employees you know no matter where you work you don't want to be known as the place that hired the person that whatever did something nefarious to the community or whatever else now i'm definitely battling on so th this guy got a hold of me and uh, he had the five questions in which i asked the other guy by the way, way the other guy i'm not even going to use the first name on him either he he was telling me for a long time well two or three phone calls now hey Look out, because something's coming in the beginning of the year. Look out, something's coming in the beginning of the year. And I, I was like, well, okay, well, what? And he goes, well, there's a lot of things happening with patents with uh, in the background. They're trying to keep everybody occupied, as you know, as you already know on your channel, most of the people that watch your channel. They're trying to keep us distracted with the FTX mess, but what's really going on in the background is there's a lot of hard law rule things happening. And he confirmed what my other brokerage buddies knew. Um, they're not a brokerage, they're, they're a clearing. Uh, but they told me a long time ago, all the brokers are already in. These guys have already purchased almost all the top 100 crypto that they know are going to do well. So he gave me, um, about a month ago, he said, look out, because there's a little company called Algorand. And I'm like, yeah, I know who those guys are. He goes, look out for Algorand. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, they're being picked up and they're being adopted by global banking systems. They like the, uh, 
there's a couple of things within their code in which they really like, and he wouldn't tell me what they were, and I can't guess because there's too much code. But um, there's something about the way they can keep it centralized, but being decentralized. In other words, there's ways for them to keep secrets within an open system, if you will. And he just said they really like that one a lot. They like that platform and they're, they're going to run a lot of things on it. Not all things, obviously. We know that a lot of things, most things are going to run on XRP and, and the rest of that. But still, you need, uh, you, you need those platforms um, to uh, get... What's going to happen, okay, is these banking systems are going to attach themselves to countries and this country is going to have that one and that one and that one and this one and this one and that goes all the way back to the wef and the BRICS nations and everything that i've been talking about for a long time in this channel all of those are different players by the way this has come to light and this is big now i'm really bouncing around but it's so important our banking system is split down the middle the Fed and the Treasury don't see eye to eye in this nation, in the U.S. They are at each other's necks. The, they don't want what the other one's serving up, if you know what I mean. They're, they don't like the way the Fed is doing what they're doing. The Fed is going rogue on the whole world, on the whole central banking system. And if you can't see that, like... That's pretty obvious, guys. And what that tells us all in the... Well, I, that's what I talked to when I talked to his brokers. I go, what's going on with the Fed? These guys are completely rogue. They're not going to flip at all, are they? They're, they're not going to switch back on to printing money. And he goes, everything I've heard is no. Like, they're not going to do it. Now, it was a bit of a guess, but an educated guess. Zach and I on his show a long time ago now, I kept two, three months ago, we're talking about exactly that. I don't think they're going to flip anytime soon. Kind of got that one right, I guess. I don't know. Sometimes you get one right. But it's happening in real-time speed right now that other countries are adopting different platforms. Okay? Algorand is really... I mean, it's on sale right now. And it's 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 it had a big boost last week. I believe it was... Uh, Let's see, it was Italy, I know Spain, uh, I know that Argentina is, is involved in, with Algo, I know that uh, for sure um, Costa Rica, that's, that's one that I have a kind of an inside move on too. Um, let's get back to Goldman Sachs. Okay, what Goldman guy answered, my standard five questions you know, what's going on with the Fed and how come the Fed and the Treasury aren't seeing eye to eye? His answer to me was very blatant. They are splitting apart in their financial decisions. It's no longer a joint. They are both taking different avenues to try and get to the same location. And I, so I tried to get some clarity on that because I kind of already had that figured out. I said, but what, what is it? And he said, it's, it's all political. This is his opinion. He's not the top guy in Goldman, obviously. He's just another guy with another opinion, but he's pretty high ranking. And he, he thinks that they're all going to get to the point to where they're going to try and control the U.S. dollar through digital means of CBDCs, and they're going to try and do that, and they're going to the, what, and the Fed doesn't want any part of that. He thinks it's this Treasury, which I completely, he and I agree on this. He thinks the Treasury wants to be involved with the central banking system, Miss Janet, with the WEF, and I believe I told him this one, and he he kind of went along with it, the Fed is completely going rogue on all of that. I mean, I, I, I think Jay Powell might be really a, uh, into nationalism. 
I don't think he's a globalist as much as we all might want to believe that he is. I can't prove that. I don't know that for sure. But I've not been alone. I, I Every time I bring that point up to people that might have a higher level view than mine, they all sort of scratch. The phone goes quiet. They scratch their head and you can hear them just thinking about that. They're like, yeah, there might be something to that because they're showing a lot of cards right now that in the past they would have already folded that hand. They would have already said, hey, you know what? You're right. We need to flip. We need to start printing more money. We need to start lowering interest rates. Wall Street's screaming. But see, I hit him with these five questions and number two, that I already on number two. Number two was, I have an idea that you guys, being Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and you banking, US banking Wall Street institutions are separating yourselves from the central banking systems. And you two have chosen a team. And one team is a federalist, if you will, the federal government of each country in a nation, nation to nation group, okay? And you being the Federal Reserve, I know they're not federal and I know they have no reserves, but that group is a comprised of, as we know, 13 families or groups, if you will, who are all owners of these banking American banking institutions which want to see America succeed okay when I'm not sure in the last decade that they wanted that and I don't want to get too deep into that because it's very conspiratorial but I don't believe the WEF really is on the U.S. American citizens' side. I think they want to be more of a globalist system at the expense of the American people. And I don't want to get too deep into that, but you get where I'm going with that, right? And I think what's happened is you guys, Goldman's being Goldman Sachs, I think you guys flipped. And you guys are no more, no, no more globalists you are now trying to save your own banking systems because you see what they're doing to the the digital currency of the United States. They're destroying it. And you guys were part of the whole thing that loaned the $23 trillion back in 2020. I wasn't real clear in that other video what year I was talking about. That happened in 2020, and they bailed all these banks out from the backside, okay? And I think it was the last time the Federal Reserve is saying, hey, that's it, guys. Here's your, here's your treats. We're not doing that anymore. We're done with that. And from what I can find, they really haven't done that again since, okay? Now... I believe that a lot of our government people are part of the globalist system, clearly. They want to continue the United States to be a globalist nation. In fact, I'd say between Europe and the U.S., they lead that charge, okay? In particular, you know, Germany and the Swiss and uh, the U.S. and all your Canada and Australia and all of these countries have joined together and decided that we're going to make one global system out of the whole thing. And there are more and more nations every single day wanting to be less part of that. And I, I get a lot of comments down below about, wow, Alan, are you a Putin lover or something? I was like, no, 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 I, that's not the point. The point is this. Western media has made him out to be the boogeyman or the new Hitler or whatever it might be. But you have to ask yourself a simple question here. Why are there 30 countries waiting to be part of the BRICS nations? If he's lost his mind, why are more people in the population of the world, by the way, BRICS has more population than the Western group, cabal, whatever you want to call those people, okay? Why are there more people in the world supporting that? 
why is he getting Saudi Arabia on his side after he they've been our ally for 50 years? Why is Argentina already trying to, they're beating the BRICS doors down? Costa Rica, El Salvador, most of Central America is knocking the door down to the BRICS nations. Why do they want to be with such an evil dictator? I'm just saying, you got to be careful of the media in which you listen to. I'm not saying he's a great guy because I know he's not. I, I know none of these people at the top really have you and I's best interest. And I think that's been proven over the history of man. Um, however, I, I, that, that was the third question I asked him. Do you believe that the BRICS is part of the whole? And he didn't know a lot about it. He's not really into, you know, um, geopolitical, you know, uh, stuff. But number four was the last one. It's actually number five, but the, it's, they're related. I said, how long until the entire financial system runs on something like a, a system like XRP? And he asked me, did you hear that the patent went through from 2020 with Visa? And I said, yes, I did. He said, we didn't even know that patent was filed until this week. And all of us were standing around like, well, do I have enough XRP? <laughs> that's what they all, that's what I'm so excited about this video right now. All of them were going, we don't know, do we have enough XRP? Are we buying XRP? Where, where, where do I get a hold? Like it sent shock waves through a very small office of his. I didn't ask him how many employees, how many people work directly there, but they were all driving their cars home going, I think I might want to buy more of that. That's the punchline of this entire video that I wanted to share with you guys, because here's yet another broker telling me, uh, Visa's patent went through and not only did it go through, um, why didn't we know more about this? And how come I can't get my office to tell me this before today when the whole media knows about it? Like I have to find out about the, from the media. That's a pretty high ranking uh, individual at Goldman Sachs. So hang on guys. I mean, uh, we're in the right products here. We just are, it's coming our way. I don't know if you saw the report about Bitcoin and, and uh, 83 is it 87 percent 80 percent of the 87 percent of the corporations and wealthy people uh the larger accounts own bitcoin i mean that's just proof to me that it's not going anywhere i know it sucks that only 13 percent of this little little accounts being meaning 10 uh bitcoin or less uh that just means to me that if if you feel that you have enough xrp or you have enough xlm and xdc and algorand obviously you might want to own some of that i'm not not financial advice not telling you what to buy but uh, when you feel that you've had enough of these others it's not a bad idea to to stack sats okay guys so anyway um that was my kind of little breaking news from my broker my new kind of broker inside guy and uh i just it was so refreshing to hear him so excited over the phone and i know that all of us need good news as much good news as we can find and i thought that was really good news so i really wanted to share it with you guys all right uh with that i think i'm out of here so i'm out good lord it's cold in this trailer I need a big plush studio. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm... Yeah, I think I'll just blow 40 or 50 grand on a nice studio. Sure, why not? <laughs>